Koto Enhanced Learning presents the CEL video series for creating projects that integrate computing with the world around us using Arduino Uno. Through this video series, we aim to introduce you to the world of physical computing and the Internet of Things. Hello everyone, I am Ayu Shankaran, an enthusiastic coder and a regular CEL hackathon participant. I will be your host for today. Welcome to the 7th episode of the series Sunflower. In this episode, we are going to create a prototype of a solar panel setup to optimize solar energy usage by moving the panel in the direction of sunlight. I am sure all of us have heard of climate change, which is a global challenge currently. Increase in global temperature, glaciers melting, and harsh weather as a side effect of climate change that is threatening the world today. The energy crisis is one of the main reasons for the ill effects of climate change. One way to tackle climate change is to opt for a sustainable energy source such as solar power or wind power as it limits greenhouse gas emissions. But not all places are solar energy rich. So, we need to develop solutions that optimize solar energy usage. Today, we are going to create a prototype of a solar panel setup to optimize solar energy usage by moving the panel in the direction of sunlight. The components we will need for a project are the Arduino microprocessor, the breadboard, the jumper wires, the servo motor, the photoresistor, the resistor, and the cable to connect to computer. Now we need to create the circuit. If you want to know more about how the photoresistor and resistor work, please watch episode 5 of the series at to know more about the servo motor, watch episode 6. To create the circuit, we will first connect the photoresistor to the breadboard. Use connecting wires. Connect any one leg with analog pin A4 and another leg to GND as shown in the image. Connect the resistor as shown in the image to the breadboard. One end of the resistor is connected to the photoresistor end which is connected with A4 pin. Another end is connected with Arduino board 5V pin. Take the servo motor and connect the ground, the brown color wire, to the first row in the breadboard. Connect the second motor wire, which is red, to the second row in the breadboard. Now connect the last motor wire, orange, to the digital pin 10 in Arduino board. Lastly, take two connecting wires. Connect one in Arduino board 5V to the breadboard second row pin. Connect the second wire to the Arduino board GND to the breadboard first row pin. Now we will make the connections. We will first connect the photoresistor to the breadboard. Using connector wires, we will connect any one leg with analog pin A4. We connect the other leg to breadboard's first row pin, which will later be connected to GND. Next, connect the resistor to the breadboard such that one end of the resistor is connected to the photoresistor end which is connected with the A4 pin. Connect the other end to breadboard second row pin which will later connect to Arduino board 5V pin. Take the servo motor and connect the orange wire to the digital pin 10 in Arduino board. Next, connect the ground brown color wire to the first row in the breadboard. Connect the red wire to the second row in the breadboard. Lastly, 
take two connecting wires. Using one wire, connect the Arduino board GND to the breadboard's first row pin. Connect second wire from breadboard second row pin to Arduino board 5V pin. Finally, connect the Arduino to the computer using the connector cable. This completes our connections. Now we will move to coding our project. We have opened a new project on mBlocks and signed into our account. If you do not know how to do this yet, please view the first video in this series which has instructions to install mLink driver and create your credentials. Once inside, you can rename the project to Sunflower and save the project. Now we will connect the Arduino to our project. From the Devices tab, I click on the Add button and select Arduino Uno from the list. Then I click the Connect button. Now I see that our device has been connected to the project. From Events, I bring the block when Arduino starts up. Keep watching the corresponding codes coming up in C language as well. Now we will go to the variables group and create a variable named degree. We then set its value to 0. Now I go to the pins group and bring set servo ping angle and set the pin to 10 and angle to degree. Next. I am going to bring a forever block from controls group. Now we will add an extension to our project. I click on extensions and under device extension search for upload. I add the upload mode broadcast by developer and block to my project. Now from upload broadcast group I will bring the send upload mode message with value block and change the message to value. Then I go to pins group and bring read analog pin A block and change 0 to 4. Now we are going to move the servo motor when it becomes dark. For this I am using the value 280 greater than which will make the motor move. I check if the analog pin A4 value is greater than 280 using the if then block. If yes, then we change the degree by 5 and set servo pin 10 angle to degree. Then we check if the degree equals 180. If yes, we set the degree to 0 and again set the servo pin 10 angle to degree. Now that we have written the code, let us upload it to the Arduino processor by going into the device tab and clicking the upload button. The code has successfully uploaded. This brings us to the end of coding the project. Let us test the project. As you can see, when the luminosity is greater than 280, the servo motor moves continuously. But when light falls on the photoresistor and the luminosity is less than 280, the servo motor stops moving. 
Let's try it a few more times. We have a fully functioning app now. Did you notice that this project has multiple components and connections? It could so happen that even after doing all the steps, your project is not working as desired. In such case, do not lose hope. Recheck all your connections one by one. Connect only the photo resistor and resistor to check the light settings or only the servo motor to check if that is working properly. Also, some jumper wires may have loose connections, so check them thoroughly as well. With a little patience and troubleshooting, I am sure you can get your project to work. In the next episode, we will create a parking assistance system that will help to assist drivers to park their cars with ease. I will meet you in my next video. This is Ayush signing off. Bye.